Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. We're always glad to be able to spend a few minutes with you and share with you today. Well, Ruth, as what we, we uh, start yeah. this wonderful week, I know that uh, you were away. We were away last yeah. week, did a little vacation. That uh -huh. was fun. I it like was vacation. So not, like you vacation. Know, it was so nice to get away, and um, <laughs> we, we were not far. We, were, we stayed in the state, but it rained um, quite a bit while we were gone. It was so beautiful. You know, Everything is so green. It makes it nice when you can kind of just get away to a different setting. And sometimes that does it for you to kind of reset your mind and reset your situation. I think it really does. You know, we're in the midst of this restart of school. Mm -hmm. And so here we come with a brand new school year. And a lot of folks are probably thinking, if I haven't gotten my va vacation in, I need to get it in pretty quick because some schools are starting within the next few days. So yeah. Here we go, brand new, brand new school year, and off and to the races. And you believe it's already again. here? It's already. I spoke with someone um, a couple of weeks ago, and they had they had everything ready for their daughter. She said, "I have, you know, her uniforms ordered, um, ready to go, her supplies and her new backpack. Wow, just ready to do it. So that's that's exciting that, that the kids get to come back to class." And they get to go to class instead of being on right. Zoom calls. Right. Well, let's look at what's in the news today. A lot of things that are there. One of the things that is being talked about is the great resignation. You know, over the last, I guess, last couple of years, you've seen a lot of people that have resigned their jobs mm -hmm. in search of something new, something better. Mm -hmm. um, the job market has been very tight. And so people are able to leave job A and go to job B. Yep. Well, now there's something new. Uh, experts are starting to talk about, one expert describes it as the great regret. Mm -hmm. uh, this didn't turn out to be as good as I thought it would be. Right, with about 42% of the people um, after quitting their job and going to their new job finding that it didn't meet their expectations of what they were anticipating having with their new job. Yeah, that, that's kind of a high number, almost half mm -hmm. of people who, who just really aren't fond of the new thing. Now, a lot of this, it kind of goes back to the fact that some people left saying, hey, I can get a signing bonus. The money will make the difference. Well, the money doesn't always make the difference. Or possibly the reason that you find an opening is because the environment that you are moving to is uh, less desirable than the one you're moving from. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. that's the reason they have the opening. Somebody else yeah. is gone or there's, mm -hmm. there's some other reason that has opened that up. And so we're seeing people say, man, this is not what mm -hmm. I hope for. Apparently is really heavy among 25 to 35 year olds. Some of them, they were expecting, I guess, more paid time off, which, or a flexible uh, schedule, mm -hmm. remote working, right? You can stay home in your pajamas and work. And so things don't seem to be unfolding the way they thought they were. I just, I just think it's kind of funny because it's very, it's me, 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 you know, and work is work. Work is never easy wherever you are. And to that think, is why they call to it think, a job. exactly, yeah. to think that you can go to work and it's going to be easy every day. It isn't. It isn't going to be easy every day. It's, it's hard. Yeah. And when you can find an environment that is a peaceful environment, I, I came from a very large corporation and it is worldwide, but and it was good, and I believe the, the Lord had me there for a season to, to, uh, to make a difference and to see how that side of everything works. But I tell you what, coming into the environment that I've been in for the past couple decades, there's no comparison at all. Um, mm -hmm. And so although maybe there I might have been at a different position or a higher position by now to be where I am now, God has just blessed and opened doors, and I wouldn't change it for anything. So, you know, if you're happy, uh, the Bible puts it this way, godliness with contentment with is contentment. great game. Yes. So, and I think that's what people are lacking. They're lacking the contentment yeah. piece I, I of it. I think you're right. Yeah. You're not content. And that, that makes for a struggle. Well, here's a sad piece of, of news. Uh, Olivia Newton-John, um, who had fought cancer for, mm. I think, 30 years, mm -hmm. breast cancer, mm -hmm. passed away in just the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. She was probably best known for the film Grease, which was... Mm -hmm. What was that, an 80s movie? I, I don't remember it when it came. Uh, it was co starred with the John Travolta, right? Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's an old and one. And she was a singer, and so she was known for some of her, with, with her songs. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of a, a sad piece, but 
that's out there as well. Now, on a happier note, mm -hmm. did you see, in fact, I know you saw this because you shared this information with me. It was uh, talking about a mother and, and daughter, daughter they, pilot, co-pilot team. They become co-pilots on a Southwest flight. So the mother uh, started her career as a, uh, a, was it a stewardess, I believe? Mm, wow, and, I'm not sure. Um, she started fresh out of college and she went to aviation school. She became a pilot. Well, her daughter, of course, um, was very, oh my goodness, I can't she think was, of it. She was very, well, she was very interested in this and kind of exposed, exposed. to the fact that, hey, mom's a pilot mm -hmm. and this exposed. looks like something that I might want to do. And I think as early as 14, 14. she started getting more into the whole aviation thing. So it. now Southwest Airlines announced that they had the first mother-daughter pilot duo with Captain cool. Holly Pettit, joined by First Officer Keely Pettit in mm -hmm. the cockpit. Isn't that cool? That is pretty cool. What a dream. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> Not really, like but you, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's neat. My grandfather was a pilot of those little little bitty airplanes, you know, but um, I don't know, those big jets, I, that, would be, that would probably be a rush, wouldn't it? Yes. So. Very cool. Interesting stuff. In the news there, that's kind of more of a feel-good story. Mm -hmm. I like feel-good stories because they make you feel good, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the other end of things. Obviously, you have probably heard ever since uh, Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan that the folks in China have been saber rattling and they have uh, been engaged with military drills. The uh, folks in Taiwan are saying that they really, the, the foreign minister had warned um, that he really felt like they were using these aggressive military drills uh, around the island to pose the possibility of a, a real and broader invasion. Mm -hmm. Some have said that they think it might happen in 2024 as we get closer to mm -hmm. a, a general uh, presidential election. election. Uh, it's just, it seems like there's so much trouble in the world, yeah. doesn't it? Not to mention what happened overnight with the invasion of President Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago, right. Mar and um, the fact that the current administration had no idea what was happening, and I guess he spoke earlier, he was supposed to speak earlier the about, week, about President and President Biden, Biden and didn't mention didn't it, it, didn't address it at all, but... It, it just seems to be a sad saga of people, the same names seem to always pop up, yes. and the same things that don't seem to ever pan out to be true. I mean, we have gone through now, what, three or four years yeah. of hearing about, well, there's this uh, Russian collusion. Oh, no, no, no proof of that. And there's, hey, you know, now we're in now into the January 6th hearings, and uh -huh. there seems to be a struggle proving anything there. There's, you know, allegations, but doesn't seem to have any meat on the bone, and, and you know, now we go to this other thing. And one of the things that kind of seems like ahead. a real battle here is the fact that, you know, you, you think back to Hillary Clinton and the whole, you know, yes. bleach bit deal with the, the computer hard drives. And, and nothing you, happened. And, and Whatever nothing happened, happened to that? What happened that? And you're and like, how is it that it seems to play out sometimes but not all the yeah, time. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, nothing ever goes forward with that. I don't, I kind of don't understand that. And they, I think they said this morning, I heard that the judge that signed off on the, the warrant, right, is connected to Jeffrey Epstein, who is connected to others that in higher places. Yeah, see, that's so what you I mean. wonder There's just this what's going on. the wicket of mire. How, and how deep that swamp really you know, is. I'm at the point of just. Well, let's just start over at ground and you know zero what? and, and, really and we do should... something new with better people because this doesn't seem to be, it just seems to be the you know, rehash every few months of another, you know, oh, allegation, oh, but we can't prove it, oh, another, but I'm going to take you down. And oh, you know, but people I, oh, are upset. Goodness. People are upset. There are people outside of, in Florida, there are people everywhere that are upset about what's going on because it's right in front of our, it's right in front of, our, right there. You can see it. You can smell it. Well, and the fact you know that you know exactly got, what it is. You've got it. it really There's appears, a lot of unrest in our world right is. now. And it really appears that you know the FBI engaged in something where you've got folks who. It's very likely. I mean, I, he hasn't declared he'd run for president, Mr. Uh, Trump. But, but don't I mean, you a lot of people are thinking that, that that's so that kind of coming yeah, and it, it, to, to get involved with a. A presidential campaign, you know, this, uh, all of this stuff is stuff that people say, oh, we can never do this. But then it's they all do. in the Lord's hands. The Lord knows everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Well, anyway. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he moves it as he would a water course, is what the Bible says. So the Lord is in control of all things. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Definitely moving through those summer months, some great things have been happening, Ruth. We've been able to see some new equipment uh, obtained, uh, some things that we were needing in master control, in fact, where it captures uh, and, and, uh, a different programming that's coming down, even off satellite, and dealing some things there. Yes. We've been able to be working on the new cameras. We've talked about that. We've been able to receive some new lights. And, but there's still some things that we're working on. The cameras that we received um, that we, we ordered back in March, and they told us they wouldn't get here till October or maybe December, uh, started arriving in May and June. So they were early, mm -hmm. but we had to pay for them up front just to get on the, on, on the list. Yeah. And so we are still working to pay those cameras off. Mm -hmm. We had to raise or had to pay about $28,000, a little more than that, for them. And then all the support equipment that goes with them, the cards and the, you know, the cases and all, all the stuff that goes with it. So $30,000, $32,000 is about more like it. So we're a ways away from raising that money. And we certainly can use your help. People are coming alongside, uh, participating, and uh, we're thankful because as you give, and we're able to get that equipment to, to make a difference with local production and sure. things right here at KZQ. If you have that donation ready and you'd like to mail it in, you can do, the, do so to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. If you'd like to call in a donation, you can do that to 505-884-8355, extension 101, because it's automated, or simply visit us online at kazq32.org. I know we've had some calls recently about how to do that. And if you cannot connect with us by phone, visit the website, kazq32.org, give safely online, and you can also set up a day of the month that you would like to take it out if it's a reoccurring donation. We would like to say thank you so much. We pray for you, and as you send in your donations, if you have a prayer request, send that in. We mark those down, and we pray for, pray for those as they come in. Thank you so much. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. to have with us today Terry Janow who is a musician and a teacher but he's also an author and we're going to look at some neat things today Terry welcome back to Spectrum it's been a while we're going to talk to you about a book you've written but glad to have you back thank you I think it's good to be here thank you well uh, today is something new usually when I'm talking to you Terry we we discuss some events that you do with for young people in the uh, area. Albuquerque yeah. God's Talent yeah, yeah that the, the great event that you have sponsored over the last few years but I understand that you have authored a couple of books. I guess I didn't know that prior. And you have a new book out, and this is an interesting title, Musicians and Aliens for Christ. Man, how did you come up with uh, such a, a unique title? Well, we are aliens being in Christ, for sure. People look at us like we're aliens, but I was born and uh, raised in Roswell, New Mexico. And you can go anywhere in the world, and they've never heard of Albuquerque, but they all know Roswell, and um, Roswell's the home of the aliens. So I had to put that in the book because there's that really grabs people's attention because everybody goes, why would you have aliens in your book? There title? you go. <laughs> maybe, maybe you get a few extra points for interest there. Yeah. Right? That's good. As you're, you're thinking about your own career, you know, you, tell us a little bit about your background, and then you started getting involved in missions along the way, but, but to give us a little bit of your story. How did that all work together? Well, I grew up in Roswell. I went to uh, Goddard High School in Roswell, and we had a great band director. So he inspired me to be a musician. And I, um, I went to Eastern New Mexico University after I graduated for about a year and decided I didn't want to be a classical musician. So. Unfortunately, the Vietnam War was raging. That was back in, at the end of 1969. And whenever I quit school, I got my draft notice and I decided I didn't want to, um, I wanted my choice of what I could do. So I auditioned for an Air Force band and got in. And I spent the next four years um, 
in Illinois and near Chicago, and then the rest of my time playing in an Air Force band in South America and Central America. And when I got out of the service, I knew I couldn't come back to New Mexico. There just wasn't enough happening for a career. So I moved to LA and uh, built, uh, built up a career there in uh, teaching and working in the studios. And I um, taught music for 10 years at a, at a private college. It was called the Grove School of Music in uh, Los Angeles. And the earthquake came along and it destroyed my home. And, and my wife and I just said, you know, we're tired of life as a musician in LA because the focus was on me. Mm -hmm. The focus was always on making money. The focus was always on how great I am as a musician. And it wasn't on Christ. It wasn't, I wasn't doing music for, for the purposes that God created music for. So then where did you go next after LA? Um, after the earthquake, I got a call from the Lawrence Welk organization and they asked me to join them. And uh, this was in LA. And then once, once I joined them, we moved to Branson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I played with Lawrence Welk there in his new theater in Branson, Missouri for a year. And my wife and I decided this just isn't any fun. And a great organization, great musicians, but the life there was, honestly, was pretty boring because all I did was work from early morning to night, six days a week, all year round, and uh, just wasn't what I wanted to do. Now, you got involved with some things in missions, right? Toward yeah. Indonesia, so how did that fit into the puzzle? While I was teaching in LA, my wife, parents sent her to LA to study music and I was her teacher um, and after she graduated she went to the University of Laverne and we started uh, dating and um, I asked her to marry me. Well after a year in Branson we said you know we're just not living our lives the right way so Let's go to Indonesia, and we went to uh, we went to Indonesia and worked for the Full Gospel Fellowship, and and helped build a music program for a private Christian school in Jakarta. Wow. We were there for five years. We had seventeen full time music people on staff, uh, fifteen hundred kids, That's and today that same school is built up into. Um, a university that's got 16,000 kids and there are up to 600 schools throughout Indonesia. That's amazing. So, so you, you got involved with, with work in Indonesia. Uh, you obviously partnered with your wife in, right. in both music and, and mi mission, ministry. Correct. And as, as you were traveling along, how did, that, <coughs> how did you begin then to, you said a lot of that season you were not very uh, excited about where music was taking you. How did you become more enthused about where music could take someone if they used their talents for God? When I quit working for people and I started working for God, life became really great. And I began to understand what the music should be and what it was. And a lot of people say church music is boring. To me, it's not. I love going in every Sunday and playing music that leads people into the presence of Christ because that's really my purpose. Zephaniah 3.17 said, the Lord thy God is, uh, is amongst the, you and he will joy over thee and, and sing over thee. Let's talk about your book for a minute, Musicians and Aliens for Christ. You said you wrote that specifically to help the next generation understand some things about music. Give us just a little glimpse. What is the book going to, to do for someone who reads it? Well, it's going to tell them how I grew up okay. and, and, the, and the trials and the tribulations that I went through. But it's also expressing the people that God put in my life, even though I wasn't trying to follow him, he had his hand on me even when I didn't know it. Isn't that interesting? And you know, and I think a lot of times we can see that in our own lives and we see it in people in scripture, how God 
is directing them even though they don't know that they're being directed yet. I Absolutely. think of David oftentimes, and you see the way that God moved his life. And, and God has a plan for us. Yes. And, and Scripture says the steps of a, a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord has a right way. Yeah, and, and I want them to understand that the people that he put in my life in, inspired me and encouraged me to be skillful. And throughout the Bible, it tells us God wants us to be skillful at whatever it is we do. That's true. And so if I hadn't have gone through all those trials and tribulations and hadn't have run into those people that push me and push me, I don't think I would be skillful enough to do the things that I'm doing today. That's, that's interesting. Now, I understand you, you wrote another book. I, I mentioned it earlier. It's called The Simplified Guide to Jazz Improvisation. Uh, tell us just in a nutshell, what, what was that all about? Well, when I taught um, at college in uh, L.A., my, my job was I was um, the program director for the general musicianship program. And my job was to teach music theory to the incoming freshmen and, and sophomores to get them up to speed to where they could do the advanced music theory. And one of my jobs was to teach jazz improvisation there. So I taught jazz improvisation to kids from 32 different countries. And through that experience, I just kept notes and compiled it into a book. And uh, I say it's a simplified guide, but you got to know a little bit about music to be able to understand it. Um, so it's, it's not an easy book, but if you know enough about chords and music notation, it really guides you step by step through a, an approach to being able to create music instantly. So let's talk real quick about where these books can be found. I, I'm assuming that your Simplified Guide to Jazz Improvisation is still available? It's still available. Okay, and, and then the Musicians and Aliens for Christ, where do you find both those books? They're both on Amazon, and um, the, the Musicians and Aliens for Christ is available on Kindle. And if you buy it on Kindle, it's actually a little cheaper than buying the paperback on Amazon. There you go. And so they're very easy to find. All right. Well, look for these. These will uh, give you some encouragement, especially if you are interested in music or maybe you have a young person who's interested. These can really give them a life story of what God can do in the life of a musician. Thank you so much, Terry, for sharing with us. Thank today. you for uh, inviting me. that we've been focusing on over the last several weeks uh, at Evangel Christian Center where Ruth and I are the lead pastors is prayer. You know, it's important for us to pray, but you know, I've noticed something about prayer. The answer does not always come immediately. Does right. It? You know, it's, I, I would imagine that most of us today yeah. would say, as I'm, I'm going through my day, I've prayed for about my problems and um, my problem is still, in some cases, still with me. Yeah. In the book of Daniel, Daniel prays uh, in chapter 2 about a problem that he has, or he has a situation that emerges because he's going to be killed. Uh, the wise well, the men... The king's problem, yeah. Yeah, the, the king <laughs> has a problem with the dream, and he, yeah. nobody can interpret it, and he says, I'm going to kill all the wise men, which uh, gets, includes Daniel. But it mm -hmm. says in the 16th verse, Ruth, Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Mm -hmm. Now, this is interesting because the very thing prior that the king had said to the wise men is you're stalling and I'm not giving you any more time. Yep. But you know, when we are prayed up, God gives us wisdom and discernment and understanding, and he can also give us favor. Mm -hmm. And even though you may not have the answer yet, God's hand can often be revealed that he's working even though you don't know how he's working. I think many times he gives us uh, his peace in times when we still don't have the answer. I know in our family, a personal uh, experience that we've had, we had a family member, my mother um, was still here with us, and um, we had a family member, we were, she prayed for that family member, we did for 15 years. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a long time, and sometimes you're like, I don't see it, nothing's happening, 
But what are you going to do in those times when the answer doesn't come immediately? You have to be persistent, and you have to persevere in your prayers, right. right? And we don't have time to, to cover the whole chapter, chapter 2 of Daniel, but the long and the short of that is God reveals a dream when he partners with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. and they pray and God gives them the answer. Now, listen to this verse. Power it comes in James prayer. 5, mm -hmm. verse 16. It says, the earnest prayer of a righteous yes. person has great power and produces wonderful results. It does more than you think it does. And I would encourage you today, instead of worrying so much, pray more. Mm. You know, you may be very discouraged with what's going on in your life or in our city or state or country. The best thing to do is to pray. Mm -hmm. That avails more than anything else. And just like he prayed with his friends, you find someone to pray with. Like the Bible says, where two or three agree concerning anything that the Lord wills, it will be done. And so it's important that you find others to agree with you in prayer and to lift you up and you do the same for them. Thank you so much for being with us today on Spectrum.